In this video, we're going to continue our conversation about complex ions, and we're going to look at the impact they have on solubility, especially for insoluble compounds. The uh, solubility of an uh, ionic compound that contains a metal cation that is capable of forming a complex ion with something else in solution is going to then have an effect of forcing that solid to dissolve more as the ions in solution are used to form the complex ion. So thinking about this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, if we have silver chloride, which we know is really insoluble, it has a solubility product of on the order of 10 to the negative 10. And so we have a lot of silver chloride solid around um, and we'll have very little of our silver and our chloride ions. So let's say we have a beaker that's full of silver chloride and we have a little bit of these ions in solution. If we pour in some ammonium, we know that our silver is actually going to react with the ammonium and form a complex ion, the silver ammonium compound right here. Now that has a formation constant that's larger than one. So that means that any silver ions that are in solution are going to form that complex ion. Well, as that complex ion forms, we're going to see that silver concentration decrease. And as that decreases, the equilibrium for our solubility product is also going to shift right. And so we'll have these two um, equilibria that are combined together, that are connected. And as we form more of our complex ion, will create a driving force for more of our silver chloride to dissolve to give more silver ions into the solution and that's just going to drive the formation of more silver ammonium complex ion and the effect of this is that we're going to take this insoluble salt silver chloride and dissolve it by adding ammonium so let's look at this it's pretty cool so, so you have this insoluble salt. Um, it's this white stuff right here. That's our silver chloride. And um, in that, we're going to have it here. It is as a solid, as a little graphic. Um, so our silver chloride forms this solid. And then if we pour some ammonium in, so here we have ammonium being poured into our solution, we'll see that solid disappear. And what's happening is that equilibrium is shifting as that complex ion forms of the silver with the ammonium and that drives the silver chloride solid to dissolve to replace those ions that are lost to the complex ion. So we see this also with a lot of apoteric metal hydroxides. Um, so a lot of our metal hydroxides are insoluble. Um, but they can become more soluble if the solution becomes acidic. And, and a lot of that has to do with equilibrium shifting as the presence of hydroxide ions uh, decreases at the lower pH. And then also some metal hydroxides are going to be then more soluble under basic conditions um, when they're acting as a Lewis base. So uh, metal hydroxides can kind of go either way. They can get more soluble with an acidic condition or they can get more soluble with a basic condition or your aluminum is going to do both. Um, so some of the cations that are going to form these uh, amphoteric hydroxides, metal hydroxides, are aluminum, chromium, zinc, lead, tin, and cobalt. Let's look at aluminum. Aluminum is interesting. So um, we talked about aluminum when we talked about uh, acidic and basic and neutral salts when we, we went through acid-base chemistry in Chemistry 162. And we said that aluminum was a highly charged small cation that would coordinate to water and it would actually become acidic. So as that water coordinated, and now we know that's a, a coordinate covalent bond forming in a complex ion, that's also a Lewis acid base adduct, that it is going to make the hydrogens attached to the water acidic. And so when that happens, it forms this um, aluminum species that has water coordinated to it and a hydroxide. And the hydroxide is 
coming from the loss of a hydrogen to the water in an acid-base reaction producing um, hydronium ion and creating a, a generally acidic solution. So we know this already about aluminum from, from looking at acidic salts. So if we add hydroxide ions to this solution, we're actually going to drive the equilibrium to the right um, because we're going to, as we add hydroxide, be decreasing our concentration of hydronium ions. And we're going to see that at a neutral pH, our aluminum compound now is going to look like aluminum with three waters coordinated and three hydroxide ions coordinated to it. And then if we keep adding hydroxide ions until we're at a basic pH, we're actually going to see more of the hydroxide ions combined uh, or covalent, coordinate covalently connected to the aluminum. It's probably not the best way to say it. <laughs> um, and so, so depending on the pH, this metal hydroxide, because again, it's amphoteric, is going to have different forms. And I just want to move past this real quick to this. And so because of that, we actually see different solubility at different pHs for this aluminum. So at a really acidic pH, where we have um, aluminum coordinated by just waters, we're going to see that it's soluble in water. And at basic pHs, when we have more hydroxide than water molecules uh, coordinated to the aluminum, we're gonna see it's also soluble. But it's gonna go through an insoluble phase at a neutral pH. Uh, it's gonna form a solid then. And so as you increase the pH, you will see this aluminum solid form and then disappear. And so if we take advantage and are careful of our pH and our acid-base chemistry, we can actually use this to separate out aluminum species or identify them. I'm gonna go back to the slide I skipped now. So this was just looking at formation constants for different metal hydroxides. And, and I've got, um, this is just our formation constant table. And I just wanna use it to point out our hydroxide ions here and their formation constants. They're all you know, quite large. These are gonna be used in the qualitative analysis of cations um, and anions lab. And so I wanted to point out these on our formation constant table um, so you're aware of them as you're approaching that. And so we've talked about the aluminum, the aluminum um, complex ion formation. Um, but you'll see similar behavior for cobalt and chromium, lead, tin, and zinc.